everyone. This weekend we are in Bob Cage in Ontario and we are going to take you around the city to show you some of the things that you can see and do if you're planning your own vacation to Bob Cage in. In this video we're going to cover things like the Kawartha Settlers Village, Kawartha Dairy and stay tuned to see where we get some delicious craft beer. Bob Cajun is located about two hours northeast of Toronto and about three hours northwest from Kingston in the Kawartha Lakes area. It's right between Sturgeon and Pigeon Lakes which connect by the historic canals and locks of the Trent Severn Waterway. It has a bustling downtown area and is a popular hub in cottage country. A big thanks to my uncle, a Bob Cajun local, for recommending a number of these attractions for us to check out. And stay tuned to the end to see two places you can stay in the area. Now let's jump right in to 14 things you can see and do in Bob Cajun. No trip to Bob Cajun would be complete without a visit to the Kawartha Dairy. This 100% Canadian and family owned company is headquartered in Bob Cajun where it was founded in 1937. They offer over 40 flavors of ice cream and even have sorbets, lactose free and a reduced sugar option available. We decided to try something new and got key lime pie. It was definitely a hit with us. The next thing to do would be to visit the Boyd Heritage Museum to learn more about the history of Mawson Boyd, a pioneer who arrived in 1833 and became the lumber king of the Trent. You can also learn about some Bob Cajun history and see artifacts from the Boyd family with a special focus on the history of the lumber industry in the area. Admission to the museum is by donation and it took us about 35 minutes to look through. Number three is to dine Riverside and the Bob Cajun Inn has a unique waterfront patio bar and grill where you can walk in or for the many boaters in the area, you can park your boat on their docks while you eat. In the winter, they even say you can arrive by snowmobile. We ate here last summer and they had a pretty diverse menu. They also offer 15 rooms in their inn if you're looking for an accommodation. And if you're here for a weekend or a full day, you should definitely dine downtown at one of the many options available. We thought El Patio looked pretty interesting and we love Mexican food, so we stopped here for dinner. It's actually a food truck and patio that is part of the Kawartha Coffee Company. The cafe is open from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and the patio opens at noon. We had the chicken tacos and chicken burrito and really enjoyed the food and the atmosphere. A popular thing to do in Bob Cajun, whether you have a boat or not, is to go fishing. There are numerous spots along the river where we saw people fishing throughout the day. So bring your fishing gear and find a spot. Just make sure you have your fishing license and read the signs. Unfortunately on this visit, the historic swing bridge was under construction and it looks like it will be for a few more months at least. But we did see it open on a former visit and it's quite the sight to see when a large boat is going through. Now, a bit of history on the swing bridge. It sits right in the middle of town and was built in 1921 to allow large boats to pass through when opened by the Lockmaster. When not under construction, cars and pedestrian traffic can use the bridge as a more convenient way to get to the downtown area. And speaking of downtown, number seven on my list is to shop downtown. According to the town website, Bob Cajun boasts one of Ontario's largest suppliers of shoes and swimwear, but there are so many other shops to check out as well. If you're looking for clothing, home decor, unique gifts, or regular amenities such as a grocery store or pharmacy, you have options in the heart of town. And it's also easily accessible for boaters moored at the docks to walk to. Next on my list is to visit Bigley Sweet Treats for some goodies. Shopping can definitely work up an appetite and they have a wide selection of ice cream, frozen desserts, candy, and fresh fudge on their menu. But you can even get a hot dog and pop combo if you don't want something sweet. We went for more of the Kawartha Dairy ice cream and this time my hubby got a milkshake and I got a waffle cone. They definitely hit the spot.
Lock 32 is another historic attraction in the city and number 9 on my list. This lock was the first lock in the Trent Severn Waterway and dates back to over 160 years ago. This lock connects boaters on Sturgeon and Pigeon Lakes and is right in the centre of Bob Cajun, almost right beside the swing bridge. We arrived just in time to see a few boats in the lock preparing to enter Sturgeon Lake. Definitely check it out if you're in the area. Number 10 is boating and water sports. Bob Cajun is a popular spot for boaters. You can moor overnight at the locks and there is also a marina in town with a boat launch. Even if you don't have your own boat, there are different places to rent boats, sea dews and jet skis, canoes and even other equipment in the area. And it's a beautiful place to spend a day on the water. My next attraction is the Kawartha Settlers Village. This village was once a family farm and is now the site of over 20 historic homes and buildings from the Kawarthas. The artifacts on site date between 1830 and 1935 and help you get an idea of what it would have been like to be a pioneer in the Kawarthas during that time. The village was established in 1990 and today you are able to walk through the grounds, trails and some of the buildings to learn more about Bob Cajun's history and culture. They close for December and January, but are otherwise open year-round and admission is very reasonable at $7 for adults, $3 for kids 5 to 12, and younger children are free. I really enjoyed our time here and we basically had the place to ourselves. Number 12 on my list is to have breakfast at the Full Cup Cafe. This retro-inspired diner does not disappoint. We had a bit of a wait to get in, but it was worth it for the awesome breakfast that we had of eggs benedict and apple fritter french toast. You need to arrive hungry because the portions there are very generous. And good to note, they also serve brunch and lunch items, and it was cash only. The next attraction is the Bob Cajun Farmer's Market. This market is open on Saturdays from May to October. It is a 100 kilometer market, which means everything sold here is either made or grown by the vendor within 100 kilometers. There was a wide variety of items being sold here, including honey, baked goods, handiwork, cheese, and fresh produce. I picked up some honey, cheese, and cinnamon buns, and everything tasted very fresh. And last but not least, number 14 is to visit the Old Dog Brewing Company. This is currently Bob Cajun's only in-town brewery. Although from what I read, Bob Cajun Brewery is setting up shop in town soon, but their tap room is currently located in Peterborough. Back to Old Dog. The brewery is, you guessed it, dog friendly. It had seating on their patio and indoors, and there were eight beers on tap. My favorite was their Airedale Pale Ale IPA. And yes, all of the beers are named after dogs. They do beers by the glass and even flights of four like we had. If you like beer, definitely add this to your itinerary. And before I end this video, I wanted to share a few options for accommodations in the area. We personally stayed at the South Winds Resort in a one bedroom Riverside room. My parents had a standard room and they were both clean and pretty comfortable, though the mattresses could definitely use some cushion. It was located riverside and had great amenities if you were staying for a few nights. And we heard that Gordon's Cottage Rentals had some pretty unique accommodations. Basically, cottages that float in the boat slips at the marina. They're open from mid-May to mid-October. I can't say how comfortable these accommodations are, but they had beautiful water views and were also conveniently located. I checked out their website and it shows that they are decently priced as well, so something to check out if you're looking to stay in the area. I hope this video can be helpful if you're planning your own trip to Bob Cajun or if you're just getting some inspiration for future travels. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more travel videos coming soon.